Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another exciting, titillating, orgasmic edition of Radical Rock and Record Reviews. And I'm your host, Wild Ride Bassist Nick Watkins, otherwise known as Dick Twatkins. And today, guys, I'm going to go on a little adventure, a little journey with you through part four of my decade series. We've done the 70s, we've done the 80s, we've done the 90s. Now, right here, right now, we're going to do the 2000s. My favorite album of all 10 years throughout the decade of the 2000s. Looking into 2000, the year 2000, we're here, guys. We've arrived in the new millennium. And I got to tell you, this was right smack into my high school years. The year 2000 was pretty damn cool, was pretty damn groovy. And there was a lot of good albums to come out in the year 2000. I mean, let's think about it, dude. Let's think about it. Right off the top of my head, you got Pantera. Reinventing the Still. You got Alice Cooper, Brutal Planet. Another guy, great album that I love. Marilyn Manson, Hollywood. You got Motley Crue, New Tattoo. You got Motorhead, We Are Motorhead. What else do you have? Iron Maiden, Bruce Dickinside returns to Iron Maiden and they, Iron Maiden gives you Brave New World, ACDC, Stiff Upper Lip. Orgy, Vapor, Transmission. I mean, what else? What the fudge else came out in the year 2000? Some excellent stuff, but when I think of the year 2000, there's only one album, one true album that sums it up for me, okay? This album not only is my favorite album of the year 2000, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. That is my favorite and the most important album to me of the 2000s decade period, all right? Let's take you back, year 2000. It's a Monday night, it's a school night, okay? I'm sitting on the phone with my buddy, John Bon Joey, Joey Dill Doey, Joseph Barnes, all right? And we used, to, we used to watch Monday Night Raw together, and we would talk on the phone. It was back in the old days, where you couldn't text, you actually had to use the telephone, a corded phone, more than likely. And we would talk on the phone and we would watch Monday Night Raw and we would just kind of, you know, watch it and kind of critique it and just talk about, it. oh my God, did you see that? Stone Cold Steve Austin did this, The Rock did this, Degeneration X did this, Kane did this, The Undertaker, ah, just all kinds of crazy cool shit. And I remember we were sitting there on the phone watching wrestling, talking about wrestling, probably talking about school, talking about, uh, we were in band together, marching band. It just good times, probably talking about hot chicks. You know how it is, man, when you're 15, 16 years old and you got your best bud on the phone. Anyway, we're talking about wrestling. We're on the phone watching Monday Night Raw. And all of a sudden, this commercial comes on. And I remember this kind of dreary kind of commercial comes on. And I remember just this killer fucking riff kicks in. And when the riff kicks in, you see this dude's kind of boot stomp on a distortion pedal or something. And this riff goes da na 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 da na 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 da na 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 da na 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 da na na na. You'll know what it is from me kind of singing that riff to you. And we were like, dude, what in the hell is that? This band, that song sounds so badass. This band just has this cool vibe. The artwork looked cool. And the song sounded bad, and the singer looked cool, the band looked cool, and it just blew our minds. Because, you know, in the year 2000, dude, you're like stuck right in the middle of this cesspool of mediocrity bullshit that I like to call new metal. Ugh, Papa Roach, Lint Biscuit, Corn, all this gross ass shit. And for a band to come out that legitimately rocks, that sounds like a rock band, that doesn't suck was pretty rare during these times. And anyway, I remember just both of us being like, what in the hell was that? And I remember in the commercial, it was like the new album, the debut album from the band. A perfect circle, mere day gnomes, which translate in English to the sea of names. But yes, my favorite album of the year 2000, A Perfect Circle, Mare Day Gnomes, of course, A Perfect Circle was and is fronted by the lead singer of Tool, the frontman of Tool, Maynard James Keenan. Also, kind of the brainchild behind uh, A Perfect Circle, APC, is former Tool guitar tech, 
Billy Howardell. So I know in the late 90s, Tool was going through some kind of legalities and they kind of couldn't really be a band and they couldn't uh, record during um, this period. So Tool was kind of at a standstill. So Maynard James Keenan hooks up with Billy Howardell and dude, they write and craft, in my opinion, the greatest album of the year 2000 and the greatest album of the 2000s period. This album is just so important to me, dude. And I remember me and Joey, John Bon Joey, getting it and dude, just falling in love. This was the soundtrack of that year, of that summer. And, and lots of times it's still the soundtrack of our lives. I mean, you had the band on lead vocals, Maynard James Keenan, guitar, lead guitar, Billy Howardell on bass, the ultra sexy hot Paz Linchanton on rhythm guitar, you had a dude named Troy Van Leeuwen. And then on drums, you had, uh, fuck, what was the drummer's name again? Josh Freese, duh. Sorry, Josh Freese, but yeah. There's the band right there. You open up the cool gatefold of the album. Yeah, and there's the band. Billy, Maynard, Paz, Troy, Josh Freese. There's artwork. All this artwork, each song pertains to a song on the album. And the album kicks open with The Hollow, fucking Magdalena. Man, one of my favorite songs, Magdalena. I love that. It's got this kind of real, really cool kind of haunting bass riff. And then this guitar comes in. Billy Howardale had such, or has, such a cool, interesting, unique guitar tone and guitar sound with some kind of chorus effects and some reverb and a slide. Excellent stuff. Magdalena rules. Rose, the song that me and John Bon Jovi heard on the commercial during Monday Night Raw. Judith, fuck your God. Good stuff, dude. Judith. It's not like you killed someone. It's not like you throw a hateful spirit to his side. Praise the one who left you broken down and paralyzed. He did it all for you. Judith is awesome. Orestes. And man, my favorite song on the album. And probably one of my favorite all-time rock ballads. Three Libras, dude. Such a good song. Three Libras. Sleeping Beauty, Thomas, Renholder, thinking of you, thinking of you, God, I'm thinking of you, thinking of you, thinking, man, thinking of you, Brynja, and over, just an excellent album, my favorite album of the year 2000, my favorite album of the decade, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, this album is just pure magic for the time it came out, and lots of history with this album, lots of history with this album, little fun fact, when, I, when old Mick Watkins, when old Dick Twatkins lost his virginity, it was to this album. So yeah, good times especially, good times especially. I don't want to divulge too much into that, but that is a little personal, interesting tale with this album. So that's probably another reason why it means so much to me. But coming in is my favorite album of the year 2000, A Perfect Circle, Mare de Gnomes. If you've never heard it, man, check it out. It is it's killer how to describe it i can't describe it kind of sounds like tool a little bit maybe there is a tool influence but guess what in my opinion a perfect circle is way better than tool and this album completely destroys anything tool has ever released so coming in number one a perfect circle mary day gnomes my favorite album of the year 2000 now the year 2001 this is another tough year. Another tough year because, dude, I'm looking around through my collection. And I'm looking at all, I'm, I just remember, dude, all kinds of killer albums came out that year. Ozzy Osbourne, Down to Earth, featuring a great song, Dreamer. Gets me through, y'all the junkie. Ozzy Osbourne, uh, Down to Earth. Alice Cooper released Dragon Town. I love Dragon Town. Dragon Town's a really killer album, in my opinion. Got the song fantasy man which is really cool rob zombie the sinister urge came out that year I'm trying to think what else oh duh tool lateralis came out now if you would have asked mick maybe 10 years ago uh if you definitely would have asked mick back in 2001 what's your favorite rock metal album that came out this year it totally would have been lateralis it would have been lateralis and over the past couple days, you know, I listened to a little Lateralis. And then I listened to the album. 
my favorite album of the year 2001 and it was kind of like oh which one do i like better but now here in the year 2021 20 years later another album surpassed tool lateralis as my favorite and well you want to know what it is here it is my favorite album of the year 2001 and i know a lot of people don't like this album and i really truly don't get it because i think this album's pretty badass i think it's a really really good album and I mean, yeah, there is maybe one clunker of a song that I really don't care for on this record. But other than that, I think this album's pretty fantastic. I think this album holds up very well to this band's legacy. And it's, in my opinion, just a really good fucking album. My favorite album of the year, 2001, produced by Buck Dharma, associate producer by Eric Bloom. I'm talking about. <laughs> Blue Oyster Cult, Curse of the Hidden Mirror. Yes. And all of the change in you, dance on stilts with me. And no one expects a thing. Dude, I love I know a lot of people don't like this, and I do not get it. Blue Oyster Cult, Curse of the Hidden Mirror, is now my favorite album of the year 2001. It's got Dance on Stilts, a song that I would love to see BOC bust out nowadays. It'd be really badass. Showtime, 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 sang by Eric Bloom. And now is the time when old gods return. Now is the time when old gods return. Now is the time when the city is going to burn. Some kind of shit like that. The old gods return is an excellent song. Now is the time the old gods return. We'll put our cities back into hell. Back into hell. Pockets a pretty neat song. One step ahead of the devil. One step ahead of the man. One step ahead of evil. I just like to be bad. That's the kind of the stinker turd of a song I don't really care for. Here Comes That Feeling is an excellent song sang by Buck Dharma. Out of the darkness. Out of the darkness is pretty cool. Stone of love. I do my hurricane. It is an eye in my hurricane. I had the hurricanes pretty good. Good to feel hungry. Eh, it's okay. So you got, I just like to be bad, good to be hungry, or good to feel hungry, excuse me. Uh, kind of clunkers, but if you take away those two songs, dude, Curse of the Hidden Mirror is just an excellent latter-day Blue Oyster Cult classic, in my opinion. And, you know, like I said about Heaven Forbid in the 90s episode, uh, you know, that if you aren't a hardcore BOC fan, you probably don't even know this album exists, and I guarantee you've never heard it. But do yourself a favor and check out my favorite album of 2001, Curse of the Hidden Mirror. Like I said about Heaven Forbid on the 90s episode, a little spoiler if you haven't watched that yet. But I remember when this album came out back in there, and I remember seeing it on the shelves in the electronic department at Walmart. And I remember picking up the CD and being like, another new Bloister Cold album, very cool. But because I was a poor ass teenager who spent all of his money on, uh, well, marijuana and Jägermeister and Bud Light back in the day, you know, Jack Daniels, I didn't buy it because I'd rather party and have a good time with my friends, which I don't regret. But anyway, my favorite album of the year, 2001, that was a tough call. Lots of good shit. Tool Lateralis, Ozzy Osbourne, Down to Earth. Alice Cooper, Dragon Town, Rob Zombie, The Sinister Urge. Lots of good, excellent, cool stuff. The BOC wins it out. So yeah, there you go. Now, my favorite album of the year, 2002. 2002, guys, here you go. Now, I remember, speaking of partying with my friends, I remember this, 2002. Uh, actually, it was kind of more 2003 when I got this album, but technically this album came out in 2002. So it's my favorite album of 2002. But I remember hanging out with my friends, my buddies, Wild Wild Motherfucking West, Slobby Robbie, Squirtus Flowins, 
all of us, maybe Billy Blowjob, Brad Akers, rest in peace, Brad Akers, whoever was hanging out with us. Might have been Josh Sumner. Ooh, Amanda, Alanis Morissette, all my good old school friends and family. But we're all sitting around at Wes's place, hanging out, probably, probably doing a little tokage, maybe tipping some back. And we were watching Headbangers Ball on MTV2. And I remember we're all just sitting around chilling and the music video for this song comes on with, for the song, Motherfucker From Hell. And he goes, like a motherfucker from hell. And I, we were just like, whoa. All of us, especially me and Wes, we were just blown away by this band. And I was like, what in the hell is this? This shit sounds like old school 70s rock and roll. It had a little bit of a kiss vibe. It had a little bit of a Thin Lizzy vibe. It had a little bit of a Cheap Trick vibe. And we're just like, damn, who is this? Well, I'll tell you who it is. And this album to me is so freaking underrated. It's insane. And I guarantee most of y'all have never heard this either. My favorite album of the year 2000, the debut album from, I think this band's from Australia. Austria, Australia, some kind of shit like that. But anyway, my favorite album of 2002, the debut album from the Dotsons, dude. Holy shit balls. Excellent album, guys. I mean, like I said, dude, if you're a fan of Kiss, if you're a fan of Thin Lizzy, if you're a fan of Cheap Trick, if you're a fan of 70s good time, hard rock and roll, dude, check this album out. You will not be sorry man it's got the opening cut sitting pretty have you heard i want to tell you something that's a little disturbed sitting pretty in these crazy days all night long in the lazy dance around my mind crazy days on my mind crazy days like a motherfucker from hell motherfucker from hell lady take me back i said lady Harmonic Generator. Oh, and this song, man. Track number five, my favorite cut on the album. That kind of reminds me of like something Kiss would have done on like, it almost kind of reminds me of, like the way that the riff is in the song and the way that the whole song is structured. Kind of reminds me of Detroit Rock City. It's What Would I Know? It sounds like something Kiss would have done on like Destroyer Rock and Roll Over. It's just, it's really badass with this cool riff. Dun, 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 dun. Come on, baby, 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 don't deny. You got me sitting here in your life. Just, it's badass. Track number six, At Your Touch. My second favorite track on this album. Think for the man in love. You build me up to bring me down. You build me up, yeah, so you can mess around. Freeze, sucker, won't move in your dead. Dude, excellent rock and roll album. Just, you know, like this was kind of like the beginnings of like, like when kind of back then when new uh, metal was kind of starting to phase out, the next rock and roll, hard rock, metal, whatever you want to call it, trend coming in was like the garage rock revival. Kind of led by the White Stripes. Remember you had the White Stripes, you had Jet, you had the Strokes. Well, this band of the bands, you had the Dotsons, and I remember they were on Ozfest for like a brief time in like either 2003 or 2004, both of which Ozfest I went to. But unfortunately, they weren't on the bill whenever we went that, those years, and I never got to see the Dotsons live in concert. This the, and and they're still around. They're still a band. They actually just released their new album this year called Eye to Eye, which I haven't really checked out. But honestly, nothing ca coming from them again hit me like this album did. This album rolls, dude. But yeah, so just check it out. Very awesome 70s good time, hard rock and roll. The Dodsons, the Dodsons kicks ass. And this is my OG copy from back then. And let me take a take the booklet out. We were having a party. Um, my buddy John Bon Joey, my buddy Travis, and my buddy Adam, they all had this apartment back in like 03, 04. And we nicknamed it the Motley House because this place was pure insanity. There was a week, there was a huge party every weekend, partying every night. It was one of the, if not, greatest times of my life at the Motley House. It was just insanity, dude. 
one of these days I'm gonna have John Bon Jovi on this show, maybe Travass even, and we will talk about the insanity of the Motley House. It was insane, dude. It was insane. But anyway, I remember one night we're jamming this album and the, seat, the case is sitting there. And if you look really close, see that stain? There's like a stain, like a beer stain. The booklet's all kind of shitty looking and warped. You know, which normally that would bug the piss out of me. My OCD-ness with my music collection. See the beer stain in the middle? But nonetheless, great times, great memories with that. So that's a cool story I wanted to share with you all about the Motley House. Good times. My favorite album of the year, 2002, The Dotsons. The Dotsons. Now we're going to move into the year 2003. Speaking of the Motley House, prime time, baby. Right in the year 2003. And with this one, man, I am stuck between two albums that I still love greatly to this day that remind me of those good times. And I'm just like, oh, which ones do I choose? Which ones do I choose? And both albums, whenever I listen to them, they take me back to those good old days, you know? And I honestly don't know which one to pick. I'm gonna show you one of the albums, A Perfect Circle, 13th Step. 13th Step is amazing. The follow-up to Meriday Gnomes. Excellent album. Man, this is the soundtrack of many good times. It's got the package, Weak and Powerless, The Noose, Blue, Vanishing, my favorite track on the album, A Stranger. You a stranger, what do I care? Vanish today, not the first time I did. A Stranger, The Outsider, Crimes, The Nurse Who Loved Me. Excellent ballad, The Nurse Who Loved Me. Pet, Lullaby, Gravity. This album's so fucking good. Twiggy Ramirez from Marilyn Manson's band, real name Jordy White, when he left Marilyn Manson's band in 02, I was crushed. And honestly, that right there was the beginning of my fallout with Marilyn Manson. But luckily, Jordy White, Twiggy Ramirez, joined a perfect circle on this album and played bass. So that worked out perfect, dude. And yeah, it's just kind of got like a cool Led Zeppelin, uh, House of the Holy kind of vibe to it. But I don't know if I pick this album or if I pick Alice Cooper, The Eyes of Alice Cooper, dude. Such a great album right here. This is Alice Cooper kind of getting away from the kind of the industrial sounds of uh, Br Brutal Planet and Dragon Town and kind of going back to kind of the garage rock, the hard rock of the original Alice Cooper group, but kind of updating it for the early 2000s to kind of fit in with the music scene, like, you know, the Dotsons, the White Stripes, the Strokes, you know, whatever, dude. I mean, here's Alice Cooper's band he had at the time, Eric Singer, Chuck Garrick, Ryan Roxy, some other dude. I'm not really sure with giant pepperoni nipples but and alice cooper of course but yeah album's great hey what do you want from me burned all my porno because you were pmsn say it offends you the talking never ends disconnected my xbox between high school and old school man of the year nova kane my favorite track on this album, and one of my favorite Alice Cooper songs of all time. Bye, bye, baby. You're in another world. Be with you a while, Detroit City. Spirits Rebellious is an excellent classic, spooky, kind of dark Alice Cooper song. This house is haunted. Love should never feel like this. The song that didn't rhyme. I remember my dad used to love the song that didn't rhyme. I'm so angry, I'm so angry. Something in my head, my eyes burning red, some shit. Backyard brawl, backyard brawl, la da da backyard brawl. So see, I love this. And I love this album. I'm so stuck in between these two. Honestly, with the way my taste in music is nowadays, I think... I listen to the eyes of Alice Cooper a little more. You know, Perfect Circle's a great, awesome band, but they're a little more laid back, kind of psychedelic, a little trippy to where that's not really my style nowadays. Nowadays, I'm into more heavy, hard rock and shit. So you know what? With that being said, man, I'm sorry, 13th Step. God, I love 13th Step. But my favorite album for Mick in 2021, my favorite album of 2003 has got to be this classic. 
the eyes of Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper is one of my all-time faves. And man, I love this great record. This is a really good album. If you haven't heard this, don't sleep on it. It's really badass. So yeah, favorite album of 2003, The Eyes of Alice Cooper. Favorite album of 2004. So this is where the music landscaping is starting to change for rock and metal. And I noticed it back then, and I noticed it when putting this list together, is that, you know what? The old guard's starting to come back. The old guard from the 70s and 80s are starting to come back. And they're like, you know what? The 90s was really rough for us, but fuck it. We're back and we're taking over. And I'm talking about some of the bands from the 70s and 80s started releasing, honestly, some of the best albums of their careers during this kind of stretch right here. Gotta go with my favorite album of 2004. This is a great return uh, from a band that went on a hiatus because Dave Mustaine, I remember around 2002 or so, 2000, yeah, 02, 03. I remember Dave Mustaine said that he had to retire from Megadeth. He had to retire um, the band and he had to quit playing guitar because he had some kind of nerve damage in one of his hands or wrist. So everybody thought Megadeth was dead, but nope. That was bullshit. It wasn't true. In 2004, Megadeth came rolling back with a return, a new version of Megadeth, not with David Elfson on bass, unfortunately, because regardless of all the stuff going on nowadays with David Elfson, I think David Elfson is an amazing bassist. I think he's Dave Mustaine's right-hand man, one of the best metal bassists there is. Who cares what he does in his personal life, okay? My opinion. But anyway... We're going back to 2004. David Elfson wasn't on this album. It was Dave Mustaine and a new breed of Megadeth. But he did bring Chris Poland back. You know, Chris Poland was on Killing Killing is My Business. Business is good. And Peace Sells, but who's buying? Personally, my favorite Megadeth guitar player, Chris Poland. But anyway, blah, blah, blah. Dave Mustaine comes roaring back with my favorite album of 2004. Psh, Megadeth, The System has failed yeah check it out dude i mean i've been into uh um megadeth for a while i kind of got into uh megadeth uh, kind of loosely uh around the time that cryptic writings came out i like uh i like that release cryptic writings is pretty good risk kind of uh, the world needs a hero uh, but man this album came roaring back dude the system has failed one of my all-time favorite Megadeth albums, letting them pull it out so you don't get the case or the gleam of the CD case. But yeah, Megadeth, the system has failed. And at the time, going through all the 9 11 shit, all the political stuff, it was a scary time period, dude, especially for a young dude my age. But yeah, check out that album cover. That album cover was just so powerful, dude. Vic Rattlehead getting paid off by George Bush, the Clintons. All kinds of cool stuff, man. It's very, very cool album cover. And the songs, dude. The songs. Black the Universe. Can't die dead enough. Kick the chair. The Scorpion. Tis in a vial. I know Jack. It's kind of, yeah. It was back in the day. You never knew because you weren't there. It doesn't matter anyway. Because you wouldn't understand. Yeah, back in the day is my favorite track on this badass album. It's got like a very kind of cool, old school kind of killing is my business. Metallica kill them all kind of vibe about it. And the song, Something That I'm Not. Oh, boy. Man, when Metallica released the pile of shit known as Saint Anger, Dave Mustaine had to laugh in his ass off when he heard that album. And I, when we thought it back then, you know, <laughs> that the song Something That I'm Not was just a roasting of James and Lars. You know, because you had Saint Anger was, in my opinion, a steaming pile of monkey shit, otter shit. Man. You know, Dave Mustaine was getting the last laugh at the time with that. Your mind tells you that you've lost your confidence. Man, you're drifting and you don't believe in anyone. Just lyrics that are just to, to the throat of James and Lars, man. Like, these lyrics especially just really knocked it home. We've laughed at all the parodies that you've become. Now your pain slowly paid back has been good. 
We've all laughed at the parodies that you've become. Deep shit, dude. Really deep stuff. Because at that point in time, you know, releasing the movie with the therapist and shit, Metallica had become a little bit of a parody of themselves. And, uh, dude, Dave Mustaine got the last laugh. But then ultimately, I think Metallica's gotten the last laugh, really, over the last 20 years, in my opinion. But yeah, my favorite album of 2004, The Mighty Megadeth, The System Has Failed. Excellent release. Probably a top five favorite Megadeth album for me. So, killer album. Listen to it if you haven't checked it out. Now we're going into 2005, dude. 2005. And there's only one album, only one contender. There's some other good shit that came out that year. But uh, I'd just gotten into this band really hardcore about two years prior. Seen this band at OzFest 2004. The headlining bands that year, Slayer, Judas Priest, and Black Sabbath, one of the greatest concerts I've ever seen in my life. And then Judas Priest reunited with Rob Halford. It was such a huge moment for me because I had just gotten into Judas Priest in like 03, after I'd gotten a hold of um, cassette tape of Unleashed in the East. That'll be a good story to save for my Judas Priest album ranking. That'll be coming up maybe in the next year or so, when they drop their new album, a little bit after that. But anyway, yeah, my favorite album of 2005, an album that was the soundtrack of a lot of good times, a lot of killer parties, and I still love this album to death. I listened to it last week or so. Still knocks my dick in the dirt. Still a great album. I'm talking about Judas Priest, Angel of Retribution, dude. Judas is rising. Gotta deal with the devil. Gotta deal with the devil's badass revolution. Worth fighting for. Worth fighting for is killer. Demon. think I could fucking talk about some Judas Priest and not scream like a banshee like the metal god Rob Halford, did you? My favorite song on the album, Wheels of Fire in my soul. Wheels of Fire, Wheels of Fire, let him roll. Angel, angel, put sad wings around me now. Escape me from this world of sin so that we can rise again. Hell Rider, Hell Rider, rolls through the night. Hell Rider. Eulogy and a song that I love to death that a lot of people don't really care for. I know Dr. Fuck Ralph Vieira also likes the song a lot. Loch Ness. Dun -dun 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 oh man, Loch Ness is like a, how long is that damn song? Like 10 minutes long? A lot of people think it's silly and goofy, but I love it, the Loch Ness Monster's so cool. How can you not love Nessie? And how can you not love an epic 10 minute or whatever length song that Judas Priest does about the Loch Ness Monster. Amazing, dude. So I saw Judas Priest on OzFest 04, the tour before uh, this album. Wish I could have seen the Angel of Retribution tour, but man, seeing them that night at OzFest was killer. I remember they did Green Mavalishi with the two-pronged crown. They did Victim of Changes. Rob Halford's screaming vocals just almost pierced my eardrums. It was insane. Such a good album, such a return to form of Judas Priest after the Ripper years in the 90s and early 2000s with Jugulator and Demolition. Not a fan of that era. I'm not a fan of Ripper Owens, this whole KK Priest thing going on right now. I'm not 100% down with that. But anyway, you had this album. It kind of melds together all of the cool eras of Priest. I mean, Judas Rising. Uh, Demonizer, Hellrider, all sound like something that could have been off of Painkiller. Where you got something like Deal with the Devil sounds like it could have been on screen for Vengeance. Worth Fighting For definitely sounds like something that could have been off Point of Entry. And Wheels of Fire sounds like something that could have been off of Defenders of the Faith or even kind of a more beefed up Turbo or something. I don't know. Badass. Love this album. Rob Halford, Glenn Tipton, K.K. Downing, Scott Travis, Ian Hill. Killing it on my favorite album in 2005. Angel of Retribution. Excellent album.
Favorite album of 2006. This one was pretty easy. Before I recorded this album, I actually listened to this album. Gotta go with uh, a lot of good stuff came out that year, man. Motorhead, Kiss of Death, Rob Zombie, Educated Horses, I remember. A couple other good ones, but man, this album is a masterpiece. Quite possibly my favorite full-length album from this band. I really, really dig it. Gotta go with Tool, 10,000 Days. And if you know anything about Tool, 10,000 Days, or the band Tool, period, their last few albums, always just had these very cool packages. You know, you take it out and you look through. See, like you look at that image right there and then you look through these goggles like a dork. Oh God, that's horrible looking. And then you see some cool 3D shit. Just excellent album. I've seen Tool on this tour. One of the greatest stage shows I've ever seen in my life. Badass concert. The arena was filled with the smell of weed. And green smoke was everywhere. It was insane. But yeah, very good album. Very good album. By Curious. By Curiously, I live while the whole world dies. I can't sing like Manor James Keenan. He's a beast. But yeah, just an excellent album. By Curious, there's the song titles. By Curious, Jombies, Badass. The pot's really cool. Uh, Lipan Conjuring. It's got this. Oh, 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 oh. Sounds like some kind of African tribe and shit. Get ready to have some kind of ceremony. To me, that's when the album really, truly kicks in and just is insane. Do uh, the album really. From the track Lost Keys, Blame Hoffman, through. My favorite song on the album, Rosetta Stoned, Intention, Right Into, Right Into. Yeah, Lost Keys, Blame Hoffman, Rosetta Stone, Intention, Right Into, and Vagina Trees. Very good album. That whole last half of the album is just awesome. I suggest you go listen to those three songs. No, those four songs. Lost Keys, Rosetta Stone, Intention, Right Into, Right Into, man. Right into uh, Rosetta Stone, badass song. Talks about like alien abduction and Rosetta Stone. It's trippy shit, man. That only Tool can really deliver. Just a very cool, like I said, probably my favorite full-length Tool album. That could be spoiling the eventual Tool album ranking, but it'll be okay. A lot of you all will probably forget anyway. Or a lot of you might not even give a shit about Tool. But uh, I do, very cool band. And my favorite album, 2006, 10,000 Days. So getting into 2007, here you go. Another band, this is kind of like another wrestling time. This decade's got a lot to do with rock and roll, heavy metal, and wrestling. So I remember uh, this is in the year 2007, 2008. I might have discovered this album in 2008. But anyway, I remember whatever. I remember watching WWE Monday Night Raw, and they were showing the commercial of their upcoming pay-per-view. I okay. can't remember what it was, maybe Survivor Series or Armageddon or some shit, whatever it was. And I remember this, the theme song for this pay-per-view was just like some killer badass balls to the wall rock and roll, a little bit sounding like ACDC. And I was like, what in the world is that? So it goes, and the theme song from blah, 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 blah is Airborne with their new hit single, Running wild, running wild and free. I think it was running wild. Might have been running wild or too much, too young, too fast. It might have been that. But anyway, my favorite album of 2007, easily. The debut album from Australia's own, The Hair to the Throne of ACDC, Airborne, dude. Airborne's an excellent band. You know, you had, like, in the early 80s, you know, you had uh, Crocus. Crocus comes out. And everybody's like, wow, Crocus sounds just like ACDC. Their lead singer, Mark Steracci, Mike Steracci, sounds like Bon Scott. Well, here you go in 2007, 2008. This band, Airborne, comes out and everybody's like, dude, these guys sound like a younger, more energetic ACDC. And these guys rule, dude. I've been a fan ever since. Unfortunately, I've not been able to see them live, but I've gotten every album since this on release date. Stand Up for Rock and Roll is great. Uh, too much, too young, too fast. Diamond in the Rough, I can't get enough of that diamond in the rough. 
Fat City Black Jack. What's eating you is eating me. What's eating you is cool. Girls in black, cheap wine, cheaper women, heartbreaker, hellfire. Just a badass, just, you know, balls to the wall, rock and roll album, dude. If you love ACDC, if you love stuff like Crocus, if you love Jackal, if you just, you know, if you love just bare bones rock, no gimmicks, no bullshit, just sweaty ass SGs and Explorers and thunderous bass, badass pounding drums, this is an album for you. Check out Airborne, dude. I mean, like the hype sticker says on the CD case uh, from Roadrunner Records. Yeah. Genuine, fist-pumping, sweat-soaked rock and roll, dude. Yeah. My favorite album of 2007, Airborne. Check out all their albums, dude. I know they've released, uh, I think, five albums now. Excellent band. I was going to go try and see them. I remember in, like, last spring, spring of, like, 2020, but then COVID-19 hit and ruin that i was gonna go try to see them at the basement in uh, nashville hopefully that gets rescheduled and i can check that shit out so yeah damn airborne running wild now, here you go 2008 2008 one of my all-time favorite bands comes roaring back finally it took eight years to get a new studio album from these guys and man i remember i was just like oh god Come on, when are we going to get a new album from Motley Crue? Well, finally, in 2008, we did. After the highly successful Carnival of Sins, Red, White, and Crue tour, the reunion, when Tommy Lee came back to the crew, and we finally got a brand new album, my favorite album of 2008, Saints of Los Angeles. I know this album is a very love it or hate it album for the band, a lot of people don't like it. A lot of people say, oh, it's nothing but a glorified 6 a.m. album with Vince Neil and Mick Mars and Tommy Lee playing on it. You know, you might, I might understand that because James Michael and DJ Ashba did a lot of co-writing with Nikki Six on here. But you know what, dude? I don't like 6 a.m. I think 6 a.m. kind of sucks, but I love this album. So what's that tell you? It's definitely a Motley Crue album. It's got all the sleaze and just rock and roll, rock star attitude of Motley Crue, but with kind of a more kind of updated and modern sound for 2008. I mean, it's got Face Down in the Dirt. What's it gonna take to make it? I'll do anything but fake it. What's it gonna take? What's it gonna take to make it here? Uh, down at the Whiskey, I love that. It talks about them back in the early 80s partying at the Whiskey A Go Go and hanging out there. The title track, a straight up Motley Crue classic, Saints of Los Angeles. We are, we are the saints. We signed our life away. Doesn't matter what you think, we're gonna do it anyway. Motherfucker of the year, the animal in me. Welcome to the Machines, pretty badass. Just another psycho, I love that song. Chicks Equals Trouble, kind of cheesy, goofy, but Motley Crue also wrote songs called She Goes Down and Slice of Your Pie. So what? it's Motley Crue. What do you expect? It's not rocket science. It's not brain surgery. It's Motley Crue, badass, hard rocking shit. This Ain't No Love Song, White Trash Circus, and Going Out Swinging. Sadly, unfortunately, this is the final Motley Crue full-length studio album. I mean, they've put out a bunch of new singles since then, but... You know, I wish Motley would do another album. I think they've got it in them. If Vince Neil could lose like 60 pounds. But uh, yeah, but if this is the last Motley Crue full length record, I think Motley Crue is going out swinging with this album. Very good stuff. My favorite album of 2008. Another great year for hard rock and metal. I remember ACDC Black Ice came out that year. Uh, White Snake Good To Be Bad came out that year. Judas Priest released Nostradamus. Uh, Alice Cooper, Along Came a Spider. But there was some other really good stuff out that year. I just can't think of it from the top of my head. But yeah, 08, Saints of Los Angeles, Motley Crue. Badass album. And to, to cap off the 2000s, it was a great decade for me. Really good times. Let me get a swiggy of my Dasani real quick. Hang on. Good, good, good. Cheers. But anyway, my favorite album of 2009... You know what it is. I'm not going to bullshit you. I love this album. Kind of like Saints of Los Angeles. This is either a love it or hate it album. 
by a lot of fans. A lot of fans love it. A lot of fans hate it. I absolutely love this album. It is the album that I had wanted this band to release for how many years was it? 11 years. It took 11 years, 11 stupid long years in between studio releases. And this is exactly the album that I wanted them to release. I remember, you know, just writing it down, wishing. You know what I wish Kiss could do, like an old school 70s sounding album? You know, kind of like rock and roll over? Well, dude, in 2009, my boys Kiss, Gene Simmons, Paul Stanley, with the new lineup of Tommy Thayer, Eric Singer. Not gonna get into the makeup issue. I don't dig Tommy and Eric wearing the makeup. But regardless, they're awesome musicians, great players. And I gotta go with my favorite album of 2009, easily, Kiss, Sonic, boom. Love it, dude. Seen this tour twice, great album. To me, if you wanna talk about Sonic Boom, okay? Sonic Boom to me is like you take Rock and Roll Over, you take Asylum, and you take Revenge. You throw them in a blender and you just mix it all up. That's when you get Kiss Sonic Boom. It's a great album to me that sounds like 70s, 80s, and 90s Kiss with some newer influences, you know? I think it's a killer album. Same old ways, modern day, Delilah. It's now your time to give. Awesome Ace Frehley inspired uh, guitar solo in that by Tommy Thayer. Gene Simmons does some of his best bass playing probably since Rock and Roll Over Love Gun on this album. Gene Simmons is on fire. Paul Stanley, this is around the time when his voice started getting a little weak on him. Paul Stanley knocks it out of the park on this album, gives some really good vocal uh, vocals on this. Good songwriting, killer songwriting. Russian Roulette's pretty cool. This is Russian Roulette. One pull of the trigger is all you're gonna get. Never enough. Never enough. Never enough. Never enough. Yeah. Even though it sounds like a ripoff, a poison, nothing but a good time, and white snakes slide it in. But regardless, it's a cool 70s vibing kiss song. Yes, I know nobody's perfect. Ba -na -na. Baby, take off your clothes. Take them out, baby. Good shit. I love Yes, I Know Nobody's Perfect. Uh, sounds like something straight off of Rock and Roll Over, dude. Kiss hadn't sounded like Kiss. This is the first time Kiss sounded like actual pure Kiss since Love Gun. So I don't know how anybody could hate this album unless they're just really stuck on the whole Tommy Thayer, Eric Singer, wearing Ace and Peter's makeup issue. I'm not a fan, but to me, when it comes down to it, the music is what matters. And I think this album delivers it in spades, man. Stand is pretty cool, even though it's kind of hokey. Stand by my side, I'll be next to you. Stand by my side, we'll make it through. Hot and cold. If it's too hot, y'all, too cold. If it's too loud, y'all, too old, baby. Let go of what you can't hold. If it's too hot and cold. Love Hot and Cold, another song. It sounds like it could have been straight off of Rock and Roll Over. Offer the Glory, sung by Eric Singer, is pretty cool. Danger Us, Danger You, Danger Me, Danger Us. Very cheesy and hokey, but it's Kiss. Who gives a shit? Kiss is cheesy and hokey, and I love them. Uh, I'm an Animal is pretty cool. I'm alive in the streets, made of fire, made of heat. I'm an animal, and I'm free. Yeah. <laughs> That's where Gene should have spit the blood off on that tour, I think. Spit the blood out. When Lightning Strikes, a song sang by Tommy Thayer. I know a lot of people call him fake Fraley and scab ace and all this stuff. And Tommy and Eric should not be in that makeup. You should have the hawk and the golf ball guy or the golfer or something. I don't know. They shouldn't be in that makeup, but it is what it is. And I, I dig Tommy Thayer. Is he Ace Fraley? No, he's not. But he does a pretty damn good job stand in for Ace, so whatever. When Lightning Strikes is really cool. One of my favorite songs on that album, and my favorite song on Sonic Boom. Let me hear you say yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Say yeah! Say yeah! 
Dude, if Say Yeah was released in 1985 off of Asylum, that shit would have been all over MTV. It would be on every Kiss Greatest Hits album. But unfortunately, because it came out in 2009, it didn't catch on as good. You know, but dude, Say Yeah to me is an all-time Kiss classic. You could throw it in probably my top 10 favorite Kiss songs of all time. Heard it live on the Sonic Boom Tour the two times I saw it. And I've seen the End of the Road Tour three times. And they've done it every time. I'm so glad that Say Yeah is on the End of the Road Tour. It's a great classic Kiss song. And I absolutely love Sonic Boom. I think it's badass. It just sucks that it took 11 years to get this album. And Kiss missed so many good opportunities of releasing new music. But they made up for it on Sonic Boom. And even Monster, in my opinion. So that's the end of the 2000s, guys. That's the end of the 2000s. We're wrapping it up. Only one episode more to go on Decades. Let's recap. My favorite album in 2009, Kiss Sonic Boom. Favorite album in 2008, Motley Crue, Saints of Los Angeles. Favorite album of 2007, Airborne, Running Wild. Favorite album of 2006, Tool, 10,000 Days. Uh, favorite album of 2005, Man, the mighty angel of retribution. Demonizer! Favorite album of 2004, Megadeth, The System Has Failed. Excellent stuff. 2003, it was a toss-up, man. A tough toss-up between A Perfect Circle, uh, 13th Step, and Alice Cooper. The Eyes of Alice Cooper. But ultimately, I had to go with The Eyes of Alice Cooper, man. Excellent return to form album for Alice. Favorite album of 2002, the Dotsons debut album, check it out. You won't be sorry, I promise. Favorite album of 2001, easily. Blue Oyster Cult, Curse of the Hidden Mirror. And my favorite album of 2000, and one of my favorite albums of all time, and my favorite album of the whole decade, A Perfect Circle, Mayor De Gnomes. All right, guys, I want to thank you all for joining me on this. We made it through the 70s, 80s, 90s, and the 2000s. The 2010s is the last to go, guys. So I want to thank you all for the subscriptions. If you like this episode, if you like the other episodes, subscribe, man. Help me get to 1,000 subscribers. I'm almost at 700 now, guys. Let's do it. Let's fucking do it. Spread the word of radical rock and record reviews and my awesomeness and your awesomeness. Let me squeeze those nipples, baby. But yeah, guys, subscribe, hit the notification bell, hit the like button. And also follow my band Wild Ride, dude. We're getting ready to go on tour next weekend. Finally, we'll be in Saginaw, Michigan next Friday. Pontiac, Michigan next Saturday. So come to the gig. Hang out with me. We'll take a picture. We'll take a shot. We'll eat a cheeseburger together. It's going to be awesome. Check Wild Ride out on Facebook. W-Y-L-D-R-Y-D-E, official Wild Ride on Instagram, www.wildride.bandcamp.com. Get you a cool Wild Ride t-shirt, a CD, a patch for your leather, a denim jacket, or vest. Check us out on YouTube, dude. Just search up Wild Ride, W-Y-L-D-R-Y-D-E, and rock out with us, dude. We're getting close to the release of our next EP, a six-track EP this time, entitled Gasoline Alley. Thank you all. I love you so much. You guys rock. Until next time, when we cruise through the 10 years of the 2010s, I will see you later, guys. Ah. Peace.